Welcome everyone to tonight's program. Um, to those on our virtual end and then those in person. Um, so we will be recording this presentation. Um, we just ask that you mute your uh, microphones. Um, we'll have plenty of time probably for questions afterwards. But um, we are so excited to have this program about QC Passport, a local um, program and project to preserve local history in the Quad Cities. Um, today presenting is the person that had the brilliant idea to do this, Natalie Linville Mast. And um, we are so excited. Um, we do have a couple of programs coming up. Um, so as always, we have our Rock Island Arsenal 160th anniversary series. And so that's online and virtual, um, or not virtual and in person. Um, and then we also have other fun programs coming up this summer, like a downtown, um, part of downtown tour of Davenport. Um, and those are, there are three options to attend that one in June, July, and August. So pick the one that works for you, um, but I'll turn it over to Natalie. Thank you. Thank you so much, Catherine. Um, thank you, Davenport Library, for um, letting me um, share what we're doing and um, bring you guys all up to speed on, on what this project is all about. Um, so QC Passport officially launched last spring, and um, but it's history. I'm just clicking things and nothing's happening. <laughs> so did I do the arrow? Oh, there it goes. Okay, so it actually was an idea that started about 10 years ago. Um, at the time, um, the Villa, um, Audubon School, and Lincoln School all um, were all went down about the same time. And um, I was at a meeting in Springfield um, with some other um, business leaders in the area, and we started talking about these buildings and and their amazing architecture, the history behind them, and, and what a loss it was to our community. And somebody in, um, at our table had said, you know, if they only put a sign there, maybe they wouldn't tear it down. And I started to think about it. I have an advertising agency named Media Link. And so I have been in marketing and advertising all my life. And when they said that, I was kind of like, well, that's not that hard. I know some people who do signs. I know some people who do graphic design. That's not a big deal. And they're like, yeah, it's really hard. And I'm like, no. So I put together a business plan and I shared it with um, two of the people that seemed to be the most interested. But it wasn't at the right time for us to be able to invest. So I kind of tabled it for a while. And then um, fast forward about eight years, seven years. <laughs> um, and um, and then um, I was at the big table and I had also participated with Lead Her and I had a mentee that was with me, her name was Rachel. And um, we sat down for lunch and we had talked about what was discussed at the big table. And with hers, um, she had met with a number of uh, people from very different backgrounds. And the feeling was, was there wasn't anything out there that really depicted our culture and, and how important it is the area that we come from. And so um, she was like, somebody in the crowd had mentioned, you know, maybe if we put a sign here, they'd know why this area was so important. And um, so I told her um, about this conversation about the business plan I had done. And she's like, and you're not doing anything? And, and um, I said, I wasn't gonna do it without somebody's help. And so she volunteered. And so the two of us worked together to put this together as a nonprofit um, in 2018, going into 2019. Um, and then working as a nonprofit, it was tough. We couldn't get a loan because you're a nonprofit. Everything has to be on grants, but you have to um, be around for a couple of years in order to get a grant. Um, so then um, the board itself too, we were also looking at um, what kind of, um, how we needed to pull all this stuff together. And um, when it came right down to it, I just couldn't feel comfortable asking people that make it their livelihood um, to donate their time and effort. I needed to be able to pay them for their work. And um, so we asked to take this as a for-profit and our board agreed with us. And so that's what we switched it over to. And um, so when we did that, 
I really um, was able to really kind of um, work through it, work through the business plan, see what was going on. And then from there, we were able to start taking off. So it all started with Kai Swanson. Um, and um, I give him full credit for this because he, uh, he's been such a huge support from the beginning and so inspirational all the way throughout this process. And he told me that um, Metrolink was looking for a way to do an audio tour um, of the history of our area and thought this would be a good match. And when I presented it to Metrolink, they said yes. So what is QC Passport? So what it is, is it's um, a place for people to be able to see how cool these things are in the actual place that they happened. There is something about being in the place where it happened that is such a big deal and is so important. And to think that you are in the same footsteps as some of the people that made this place so wonderful has a huge impact. And so this is a way to be able to bring um, different people from the Quad Cities, but the people that visit us um, to really understand stand the magnitude of this area that we live in that we call the Quad Cities. Um, and we do have such an eclectic um, past. Everything from John Deere, um, who is an international figure, to the 108th Infantry, um, who served on Arsenal Island during the Civil War. And um, for the most part, these were escaped slaves, slaves um, that served our country um, and were guards over Confederate POWs. Um, and then we also have trolleys. Um, we had a very intricate infrastructure all the way throughout the Quad Cities. And this is um, um, a crew loaded up to go to Prospect Park in the early 1900s. But it's such an eclectic past. It's so different. We were the ones who created the first sliced bread. Um, we had some of the first airplanes that were developed in, Wall in Wallace Field. You know, we had um, the Veely, which is um, one of the first cars that was developed. Um, you know, we had Dred Scott. Um, we resided here for three and a half years. Um, there's so many amazing things that have happened here and so many entrepreneurs, visionaries that we come from that this is a way for us to be able to celebrate and really be able to understand exactly the kind of impact that they had. Um, so I did share some of where it started. And like I said, it really did start um, with one person saying yes. Um, and it was really uh, Metrolink that helped us take take this and really be able to get this off the ground. Um, and that's really for any idea that you're doing, any thought where you think you can make a difference, you just need somebody to believe in you. <laughs> and, and Metrolink, they were the folks that believed in us and Kai Swanson. So, um, so we officially launched um, last spring in May of 2021. And uh, with this official launch, um, we had five signs that were posted um, throughout each one of the channel cap ports. So there are two up in Davenport um, uh, at Leclerc Park. There's one in Bettendorf um, over by the Isle of Capri. There is one on Ben Butterworth Parkway. And there are, and there's another one that is over by the Mark and Bass Street Landing. Um, so you can go ahead and you can check them out now. Um, and you can also go in there by um, downloading the Channel Cat app. You can do that through the Google, Google App Store and you can see some of what we've created so far. Um, so these are pictures of some of the signs that you'll see. So the first part of the sign gives you a couple of paragraph description of that particular destination and why it's so cool. And then when you flip over to the other side, it shares with you how you can get a fuller history of what that destination is about. And so you can listen to these and look through these as you're touring um, the Channel Cat and driving past these places that we're talking about. So beyond this, we also um, have now developed a partnership with Visit Quad Cities, where they have invested in 10 more of these signs to be located throughout the Quad Cities. Um, I do want to point out the colors because I think that's important. So mm -hmm. Visit Quad Cities um, uh, did a study quite a few years ago uh, with Bill Dice. Um, and through their study, they figured out that people really get lost here. Um, this is the only place, believe in the world, tell me if I'm wrong, but this is the only place where the river flows from east to west and not north to south. And it really turns people around. 
Um, so the idea after that was that we really need signage to be able to help people understand what part of the Quad Cities they're in um, so they don't get so lost. And so they came up with this um, system and you can see it in the logo of this, these colors that would represent each quadrant of the Quad Cities. So it's not just Davenport, it's the whole quadrant. So this also goes for, um, so if you go into Davenport, which is green, it would be Davenport, but it would also be Buffalo. It would also be LeClaire and the outlying um, suburbs of the Quad Cities. If you go um, further down and you're going into the south, West Quadrant, that would be Rock Island, and that would also be Milan and some of the areas out in that area. Blue is Moline and East Moline, and yellow would be Bettendorf and LeClaire and some of that area. So these are some of the signs that we've got that some of the destinations that are going to be coming up. Um, just some fun things about this. So Wallace Field, like I said, this was the first um, airfield that we had um, in the Quad Cities. Uh, Lindbergh um, actually was on Wallace Field. Um, and the Wallace brothers did develop their own plane, and that's it in a showcase in the Smithsonian. Um, Breton and Black, um, that's over in Hampton. Um, this building is still there, and it's used as a museum right now. Um, but it has got an incredible history that depicts the coal mining that went on in this area, as well as all of the river traffic that came up and down the Mississippi. It's an, a beautiful place to visit. I encourage you to do that. Sylvan Island has also a really varied past. And um, when you walk on there, it's, you get this feeling of this um, huge um, corporate feel that used to be kind of a ghost corporation. Um, and it's, uh, but it's a beautiful place and it's a beautiful scene to see how nature comes back um, after something like that too and makes everything beautiful again. And then Annie Whitmeyer, huge force of nature. Um, she uh, fought, um, so she helped out in the Civil War. Um, she helped out um, a number of orphans and um, Annie Whitmeyer um, happened, um, the Annie Whitmeyer complex happened because of her efforts. Um, and um, so anyway, this is some of the things that we're gonna be doing, some of the signs that we're gonna be posting um, by the end of the summer. We also formed a partnership with um, the city of Rock Island, and they'll also be investing in 10 signs within the city of Rock Island. And some of these will feature um, the, the tribes of the Fox and the Sauk. Um, so they don't have any physical um, destinations any longer because so much of their culture um, has been taken away from us. So our focus is making sure that again, we're in the footsteps of where they once stood and being able to share what their area looked like. If you were standing right here, this is what you would have seen. This is what it would have sounded like. This is what it would have been like to be in this area 200, 300, 400 years ago. So a lot of stories about our immigrants, Swedish immigrants um, were a big part of this area as well as our Irish. Um, um, so the Irish will be um, encapsulated here a lot with, um, the Weyerhausers. Weyerhausers became a national name and Frederick Weyerhausers um, home resides next to Augustana. Um, it's called House on the Hill. And, um, and this over here is Susan Jenkman down in the lower um, left-hand corner with a number of children that she helped out in something called the Immigrant House. And that's located over in West Rock Island. So, in this next phase with these next 20 signs that we're pulling together, um, we're gonna take this a step further. So what's gonna happen is when you see one of these destinations, there'll be a telephone number for you to text. And when you text that number in the subject, you put in um, a four digit code and that four digit code will lead you to the history of that particular destination. You'll be able to hear an audio production of somebody from that period um, to be able to help put you into that place and understand what it felt like, what it was like to be there. And then it'll give you a full history of what was going on. And you can really go as deep as you want to in this. Um, some of these destinations are as much as 30 pages long. Um, and some of these, um, you know, had to go into different areas because there's so many different tangents that you can go into and in looking at the history of, of one location. Natalie. Yes. Are you saying it's 30? 30... 30 pages of audio? 
No, no, no. Oh, okay. oh Lord, no. <laughs> <laughs> no, but of uh, writing. So, okay. yes, so so some of them are 30 pages long. So, uh, yes, so this okay. is what it looks like. So, when you open up, um, so when you text in um, that number and you put in that four digit code, this is an example of what you would see. So, when you open it up, you'll see on the bottom of the bar, there's an audio recording that you can listen to. Um, there's also pictures of what that destination looks like. And then as you scroll down, it, it gives you like a couple paragraph description of where you're at, give you an orientation as to this destination and why it is so cool. Um, we do have a sponsor for every single destination. Um, we need that in order to be able to keep going. And then we've got different uh, pieces um, that you can um, to find out more about that particular destination. Um, and then the next one on here is you can go ahead and um, look at some other did you knows about that particular place. And then we also have a thank you um, there as well. And we do need to mention too, there are so many different organizations who have helped us out in this effort. Um, we call them our keepers of the past because if it wasn't for their work, this wouldn't exist. Um, it's such a big deal that we contribute um, what we can. Um, and donate what we can um, so that these folks can continue the work that they do. Um, we need them here and uh, we need them to thrive and we need to be able to honor what's going on. We are so happy to share with you this interview that took place 30 years ago along the Ben Butterworth Parkway in Moline. Uh, the Ben Butterworth Parkway is such a peaceful place. I love coming here to watch the ducks or walk along the path with my family. Sort of like what you're doing here today. I bet you're wondering who is this Ben Butterworth and whether he lived in the historic Butterworth mansion. I'll get to that. But our story begins a bit further back in time. The Mississippi River has always served as a source of sustenance and transportation. First to a variety of Native Americans, and later for industry and commerce. Dimmick and Gold was one of the first to build a lumber mill along this riverfront. Other businesses followed, but because the area floods frequently, they built shops a little further away from the water. While this left the riverfront nice and open, it became known for its tall weeds, scattered fishing shacks, and an overall appearance that was, well, unpleasant to the eye. Something really needed to be done. That's where Ben Butterworth enters our story. Ben was the nephew of William Butterworth, who married Catherine Deer. And no, Ben never lived in the historic Butterworth home. But he did become well known for his legendary support of Moline Parks. Ben Butterworth was born in 1904 in New Haven, Connecticut. He attended Yale University, and after graduation, he married Kathleen Wyckoff and moved here to Moline. He went to work for Deer and Company, and then worked his way up to president of Moline Ironworks. This was a subsidiary of Deer. Ben had a variety of interests, including photography and the outdoors. So when Moline's Playground and Recreation Board was created in 1941, Ben made sure he was one of the first to be appointed. He spent 27 years on the board, and one of the first projects he wanted to work on was the riverfront, which at this time was largely owned by Deer and Company. Ben worked out a lease to allow the Playground and Recreation Board to establish and maintain a park for the benefit of the public. Later, the land became a donation to the city of Moline. You know, it took 20 years to acquire the remaining properties that make up the park today. Unfortunately, Ben passed away in 1969 before his vision for a riverfront park fully came to life. But as you can see, it did. A marina, boat ramp, and restaurant were added in the 1970s. And in the 1980s, a fishing pier, picnic shelters, and playgrounds were installed too. Today, the parkway includes 4.5 miles of paved trail for recreation, beautiful plants and trees, fitness equipment, restrooms, and parking areas. Oh, I almost forgot. 
In 1972, the park was officially named the Ben Butterworth Parkway to honor the man who believed in this area's potential. I think he would enjoy spending time here today, and I hope you do too. Thank you for listening to this audio production of the history of the Ben Butterworth Parkway. This production was compiled through the research completed by QC Passport. We do need to note that the person in this interview is a fictional representation of the research QC Passport compiled. We would like to thank Metrolink and the Rock Island County Historical Society for their help in making this production possible. That's an example of one of the pieces that we have. We're not going to listen to it again. <laughs> um, and then, um, so the next phase, after we launch this, and like I said, all of these 26 signs um, will be launched by the end of the summer. Then this winter, we'll start moving into our third phase of our projects, which is developing a cast for the booklet. So um, this is something tangible that visitors can take with them. Um, there will be an individual um, stamp pad at each one of the signs in the color of the quadrant that you're in, and it will have its own individual stamp for each location. Um, so you really will have your passport to the Quad Cities um, to be able to show your friends and your family how many of those locations that you went to. I should mention too that when you go onto the app, um, you'll put in, it, it'll track your phone number, but it'll ask for your name so that you can get in there and you can retrieve more of that information. So if you're at a destination, you've got a couple minutes to look at it. You don't have a whole lot of time to look through everything. Um, you can go ahead and you can read through it later um, so that you are able to access more of this information on a time that's more convenient for you and find out more of these little fun facts. Again, like I said, another big part of this is our keepers of the past. Um, there are so many nonprofits and so many different organizations and individuals who have helped us out over the course of these last few years. And um, we would not be able to put this information together without them. So we make a very big point of making sure that, um, that we promote them wherever we can. Um, and the Davenport Public Library is one of those partners. And we so appreciate everything that they've done to help us out. And this includes, you know, just helping us find some of the pictures that we're missing to helping us corroborate some of the information that we're looking for, um, and also to edit the work that we've done. We want to make sure that we have other folks that are looking at this that have been working on this particular subject and, and know it inside and out to make sure that we've got all of our facts right. Um, this is a community effort. This is not something that we're doing by ourselves. This is something that we're doing for the entire community to enjoy for hopefully for generations to come. Um, and so as we do this, we also want to make sure, like I said, it's important that we give to these organizations. It's important that we donate um, whatever we can to help them out. Unfortunately, historic entities um, like the Friends of the LeClaire Le House, they're not always at the top of the list with grant fundies. And so you want to make sure that you can do what you can to help support them too. Because once these locations are gone, they're gone. Once this information is lost, there's no way retrieving it. So it's a really big deal that we support this effort. Um, so we do this, like I said, we have a donation button at each one of them and, and we have a different um, nonprofit that we focus on. And then um, we also, at some point, we're gonna have some advertising on there as well. We'll be running banner ads for these folks. Um, but then we also um, have some social media pages um, that we also uh, make sure that we promote their events and what's going on. And these are some of the folks um, that have helped us out. This is not an endorsement of us. This is rather, we're endorsing them. We really want to make sure that we give them all a shout out and thank them for all of their hard work. And, um, and then yes, this is that we do have a Twitter page. Um, we've got a Facebook page. We've got an Instagram page. Um, and we've got a LinkedIn page. So whatever your social media preference is, I think we're there for you. Um, so please check it out and find, you know, see these stories and you know, if you see something that's missing, you know, let us know. So I'm going to let it be right here. Um, I would love to hear some questions from you guys and, and see what some of your thoughts are. Thank you so much for your time. Okay. Uh, a quick question. I know at one time River Action was supposedly developing something I think they're calling Museum Without Walls. Oh. Is that anything 
to do with any of this? No, nope. is that totally independent? Nope. It's something you might want to ask. Uh, it was supposed to be, I think, a, you know, maybe like a QR code at different sites around the oh, okay. cities where you could just take your phone and get information. So okay. I don't know if they ever completed it or if it was just even just an idea that never went anywhere. I'm not sure. But I'm not sure. I'm sure has you know, a lot of similarity, at least from my understanding, to what you're just accomplishing here. So. Okay. Might be somebody to get in touch with, if nothing else. I will. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, you wine, certainly. Those well, and that's the other thing stuff. too. I mean, we're, there's been a lot of different efforts on different things to make sure that we can, you know, get information out there. And the more that we can do, the better. Um, but we also live in an area, and we have to recognize this, where um, just by our geographic design, we're kind of um, fractionalized on what we can do. So, you know, the Davenport Public Library is in Davenport. You know, there's also a Moline Public Library, and there's, you know, there's also um, the Scott County Historical Society and the Rock Island Historical Society. So by design, um, they, um, each one of these organizations do a great job of being able to, you know, help out within their constituents. And this is a way to make sure that I could cross promote across all different platforms and make sure that they're all um, touched upon and, and, um, and that we're all promoting each other and working together. Is there a time frame you're focusing on does it have to be really truly historic or or is it just anything that would be of significant interest to a tourist or something? no that's a really good question um well i mean then better with parkway you heard that one that's actually pretty recent i mean you're talking about you know the the mid-60s when that went up so you're only talking about something that's 50 years old um, but at the same time um it was also one of its first um, there wasn't another um, river um, park at that time um, so what the vision was that um, that butterworth had was pretty visionary um, at the time and it took him well over 20 30 years to develop it so um, there was quite a story to be able to talk about there and it's also a point of interest because who is this butterworth I mean, you know, so many people hear the name, but they don't know what the connection is or what the story is behind it. Um, but for the most part, it's the history can go, like I said, back hundreds of years. I and mean, we're talking about the Sakhanov and the Fox. I mean, we're talking about, you know, quite a ways back. If we look at Bertrand Island or what is now Smith, I mean, that was where the first grist mill was. Um, when you talk about the lumber barons, I mean, then you're talking about, you know, the 1860s to really uh, win that boon. Uh, finished in around the 1900s. So um, it's, yeah, it's kind of all over the place, but there's so many different um, pieces of our culture and so many pieces um, of what make up our area that really have to be showcased. How are you deciding which sites and your prioritization? Of, of it's a collective effort. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, we, um, we, we take a look at what could be developed from these sites um, and what kind of information um, we know about them or how easy it is to be able to find some of this information. Um, we talk with um, the leaders, uh, the city leaders or the area leaders on whatever the project is that we're able to um, move forward with. And then that's really kind of how we come to a decision on which ones to focus on first. But there's a lot. Oh um, yeah, yeah, endless, endless. It really is. It really mm -hmm. is. We've, this is this is such an integral part in the development of the United States. Uh, people just do not realize the amount of history that's here, and it is, it's it's incredible. It's incredible. So yeah. When you, when you uh, delineating your, your footprint as being, is it all the way down to you set up to Leclerc, down by Buffalo, or is that kind of a Right now, I'm focusing on the immediate quad cities, but that doesn't mean that we can't go out to the exterior quad city. It really depends upon where those partnerships are formed and um, where we can get the funding to be able to build this further. So, we have yeah. a question from our virtual participants. Um, they ask, how many people are directly involved with QC Task Force? So our staff is staff of um, four people, um, but um, we collaborate with over um, two dozen um, different nonprofit organizations, and we also coordinate with each one of the city leaders, whether that's, that would be the city manager, the city planners, um, the park and recs department, 
Um, so there's a lot of people that are a part of each one of these destinations. Good question. Were there any other questions? Not yet. Is there signage scheduled for this building? For which this, our, the main Davenport building? Not yet. Um, I am in the works um, of talking with uh, Davenport. They have asked for a proposal. Um, if you would like to see Davenport added, please, please talk with Bruce Berger and let him know. Um, Bruce so, who? Bruce Berger. Okay. So he would he would be our main. Um, when you say to. get Davenport added, it's getting their support to get signs out about locations. Yeah. yeah. So is that something I bring to my alderman or? Yes. Yeah. Absolutely, because all of these pieces do have to go through um, city council. Um, in order to have these initial pieces put up. Um, once these pieces are up, I mean, then it's just maintenance and that we can use um, some help with advertising. And that, like I said, would be the next stage of this to be able to, what the part I didn't mention, that was so silly, I'm sorry. The more signs you go to, the more points you get, the more points you get, the more discounts um, that you'll receive and the more gifts you'll get. So, and our focus is to make sure that these points and gifts go to um, different um, um, smaller businesses in the area, the places that you want to visit when you go visit someplace. Um, so, yeah, it'd be, you know, the Largo Marcinos and, and um, it would be the different, um, the different businesses in our area that we want to make sure that people check out. So, um, there's, so... They say, okay, four people on your staff, but are you working with Western Illinois University Museum Studies Program getting interns to help you? And then also uh, they want to say that they really like your visuals. Oh, thank you. Thank you so much. Yes, we do have internships available. So if you know of somebody who would be interested, please um, let me know. Um, so yes, um, we will we'll take as much help as we can get. So, but yes, it's the four of us right now. And then, like I said, this all huge group of other people that are collaborating with us and putting these different pieces together. It's a fun project, you guys. <coughs> and it's easy to get lost. In it. <laughs> There's so many um, different twists and turns um, that are taken with each one. So it's, it's it sounds great. like a full-time job for you, but I know you do other work, right? I do, I do. Yeah. But it's, it's something that I'm passionate about. So mm -hmm. um, a little background on me, um, I, uh, so um, when I was, um, when I was in sixth grade um, for a Girl Scout project, I had to find out about my genealogy and I could earn a badge. And so I went to go visit my grandmother and the more questions I asked, the more she was like, oh, you don't need to know that. Oh, oh, we don't talk about her. <laughs> yeah, kind of, we don't talk about Bruno. It was that kind of conversation. I was like, Mm. Mm. And so both my dad and I were like, mm. so we walk out of the conversation with grandma and we're like, oh, we're going to find out about this person. <laughs> and so that led us talking to all of my um, great aunts and uncles, um, all of my second, third, fourth, fifth cousins. And over <laughs> a, the course of a couple of years, we put together a family tree book that was about this thick. And, um, and then we met so many people along the way that we brought them together into this family reunion that ended up being over 500 people it was incredible so that was by by the time I was 15 years old and, but I've got to tell you I mean it had such a huge impact on me because it helped me understand everybody has a story everybody has a purpose on this earth um, we have a very short period of time you know that we're here but we all have something incredible to share and an incredible story um, about what we've been able to do while we've been here and so that's kind of where this goes. Um, fiction is not my thing. I'm just about autobiographies, but it's because it is amazing to see what we do with this time that we have and to try to imagine living, you know, in the world that, you know, our ancestors lived in. It's hard to fathom right now. And um, it really gives me a lot of empathy and gives me a lot of hope for what we can do for the future. Yeah. Not to add to your workload, but it would be really great to have this the logo and stuff somehow made generic for like all communities along the Great River Road or something. Like that. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> Just a goal to add. To all right. It. Thank you. <laughs> but it wouldn't. I mean, it would. the Great River Road would be the super 
high end where you have that. Yeah. A lot of people travel the entire Great Lakes Road or at least segments of it that are needed to go town to town and kind of know it's going to be the same yeah. sort of system. That it is. Thank you. All right. All right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Not to add to your work. <laughs> He's volunteering. I'm an idea. yeah. I'm an idea's guy. Oh, that's fantastic. Thank you. Yeah. So, any other questions? Um, well, no, uh, another thing that can be tied in with it, uh, maybe, or, or use this, is that again, I'm kind of involved with River Action a lot, but they've got a, they call it Ride and Seek, where it's kind of a, oh. is a, Thing they do in June where you go to different points and kind of get a clue or you have to answer a question or something. I've heard about that. And it could really be readily kind of tied in with this or so or somehow utilize this. That would be wonderful. That. So yeah. Do a nice kind of meshing of things. That would be cool. Or just to do a scavenger hunt mm -hmm. from all of the different nonprofits. So yeah, yeah. I mean um, Rock Island Preservation Society, they have uh, postcards um, of all of these different um, area um, pieces that we had from the 1880s to the 1920s it would be fun to be able to do something with each one of the the different groups and and tie them together so maybe that's something that we can grow from that that would be cool so yes but i have heard about right and see that's right around father's day isn't it well it's kind of the month of june it actually okay. you know, during covid it took the place of the yeah. annual father's day where i actually but they're continuing it I that's think it's wonderful. a great idea personally it is so, it is no, that's right. Uh, the clues and stuff to be a little work actually. <laughs> I'm trying to feel my little debatable as far as <laughs> what the right answer is, I think. But that's another that's another discussion. All those kinds of things are such great ideas and they take a lot of time. Oh, yeah, you don't appreciate how much time make, make them really. Work. I mean it is so many volunteer hours. There's so much time yes. and effort that's put into this and you know, and that's that's something else too. I mean, as we were going through all of this um, and, and meeting with different folks, I mean, there's so many different booklets that have been put together on different um, neighborhoods. There um, are different promotional pieces that have been put right. together. You know, we really need to be able to highlight that and, you know, and really make sure that we come together on those pieces. So, anything else? Anything from our online crew? Because they're more than welcome to ask questions. Yeah. I does anyone else have any questions from home? You're welcome to um, on mic and so I can hear you. Stop sharing too. Okay. I appreciate everybody's time. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank